I will begin. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for this day. I thank you for your students. Help us to uh, just use this time wisely, Lord, to glorify you. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. All right, guys, you have any questions? without uh, if you, unless you have some other kind of theorem or something you know um, on the flip side to show something a couple things are not isomorphic well that's that's a little bit easier um, uh, let me let me introduce you guys to a new example um, we'll be getting to this in a, in a day or two but um, another a new a new thing we can do um, new group from old. I could have talked about this a long time ago, but if G and H are groups, then like G um, times H, or the uh, direct product of G and H, it's just the set of tuples, like G and H, such that G is in G, and H is in H. All right, this is the direct product of G and H. And um, so with this thing, and the way you multiply them is just like, just like you'd expect, like G1, H1 times G2, H2 is G1, G2, comma. You tell me the second one, Carl. H1, H2. Very good. All right. So, yeah, it's very natural. All right. This is the multiplication that you can assign to the Cartesian product of two groups. OK, so that's just a construction. So we can talk about stuff like z2 cross z2, right? So this specifically is a four. It's got four things in it, you know? 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and um, what's the other one? Oh, that's weird. My ordering is weird. I should do one zero, one one. Okay, there. Those are all the possible two tuples, right? And um, <laughs> I mean, okay, fine. When they're additive groups, this looks like what? Right. So you got to understand that <laughs> in context, right? Okay, so you could study this versus, say, Z4, right? How can we prove that Z4 is not isomorphic to Z2 cross Z2? They've got the same size, right? Like the first thing I think about is, do they have the same size? If you ask me, is Z4 isomorphic to Z5, the answer is clearly no. One has order 4, the other has order 5. Isomorphism preserves the order, right? Is it that if you have 0 cross 1, that's different from 1 cross 0? But like in Z4, 0 plus 1 is the same as like 1 plus 0? No. I don't think that's. These are both abelian. I mean, th these are both abelian groups. They're both additive. How about this one? This one over here, you notice that 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 3, but 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 0, right? The order of the element 1 is 4. Over here, is there an element of order 4? I mean, we can just go down the list. The order of 0 is 1, right? The order of 0, 1 is equal to 2, since 0, 1 plus 0, 1 
is equal to 0 plus 0 comma 1 plus 1, which is equal to 0, 0. Likewise, the order of 1, 0 is equal to the order of 1, 1. These guys all have order 2. So Z2 cross Z2 has three elements of order 2 and one element of order 1, the identity. Every group has at least one element of order 1. Well, just one element of order 1. The identity is unique. We proved that day one. So you can't have two elements of order one. It's crazy talk. Um, so this Z2 cross Z2 has three elements of order two, but Z4 is cyclic. It only has, well, excuse me, that's not the way I say it. But Z4 has <coughs> just one element of order two, right? The order of two is two. But the order of 1 is equal to the order of 3, which is equal to 4. Of course, the order of 0 is, um, is 1. So these, these groups cannot be isomorphic because Z2 cross Z2 has no element of order 4. If there was an isomorphism, it would map this element of order 4 to a corresponding element of order 4 on the other side, which is impossible. So they cannot be isomorphic. Uh, Z4 is cyclic, but this one is not cyclic also. You can... So they're not Right, because, like, um, let's see here. Over here, notice that the subgroup um, generated by 0, 1 is what? So these, look at these cyclic subgroups. In fact, all three of these cyclic subgroups, look at them. These are a lot like, I want to say these are a lot like U8. Because all the elements have order 2. Except for the identity. Yeah, didn't U8, wasn't U8 like this? Maybe we could prove Z2 cross Z2 is isomorphic to, to U8. Is that your homework problem? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Are you 10 to U12? Okay. It's, it's fascinating how much weird structure there is in these groups of units, you know? Like, but th th this is clearly, so clearly Z2 cross Z2 is not cyclic because here we have just exhibited three cyclic subgroups of order two, which are distinct, but the fundamental theorem of cyclic groups says, hey, just one cyclic group of each order that divides the group, just one. Not, not just, if you find a pair that are distinct, Game over. All right, so we have a suspicion that Z2 cross Z2 is isomorphic to U8. So let's go hunting. First of all, well, it is U8. So you actually, to actually prove isomorphism is a harder thing, right? Because we actually have to exhibit a map and show that it's one to one and on to and so forth. Um, Do you have any comments on like, the choice of map when you're trying to prove isomorphism? Oh, um, I think getting a map for, I mean, finding a, finding a map for two groups which are isomorphic is, is kind of like picking out a gift for a loved one. You have to get to know them. So okay. that would be my comment about that. I mean, there are usually some... Once you see a few of them, but no, I don't have like some kind of general algorithm. Well, that's not entirely true. There are some tricks. Um, generators have got to map to generators. The preservation of structure is very guiding. The proof that we did to find the automorphisms actually of um, Zn, there's some ideas in that, that calculation we did at the end of last class, which are kind of helpful. Anyway, so here, let's see. Let's, what was the Cayley table this thing? What was it? it was, well, I'll do the easy part.
Let's stop using this stupid thing. Oh my. Cool. What broke? The, Was the cap? The cartridge itself. Oh, weird. That is some weird, wacky stuff. I didn't... Ooh. Okay, yeah, I should stop playing this. Sorry, I was not trying to insult you. I'm just a very bad shot at the moment. All right. Um. <coughs> ah, three times three is nine, which is one. Five times three is 14. 15, which is... Seven. Um, seven, 21, 21 is five. Okay, well, duh. Um, so that's seven, this is five, this has got to be th one, one, three, three. Is that Latin square? Three, one, three, one. Did I, I put this on the test, didn't I? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, this is vaguely familiar. Um, so, right, there, and there's not just going to be one isomorphism, all right? There's like choices usually. But here would be my suspicion is if we define phi of, let's say, 0, 1 equal to, equal to 3, and phi of 1, 0 equal to 5, and phi of um, 1, 1 equal to seven, and of course, you know, phi of zero, zero is, is going to be one. So, so you can't just define it for each element, you don't have to say like... like do you give a formula? No, not necessarily. Oh, good, okay, that's what I was wondering. For, for finite cases, sometimes it's more convenient to do it element-wise, but then... Granted that the, now, okay, so like the check injective and surjective, there's like, I guess, I mean, how do you, let's see here. Um, yeah, I don't have a slick formula for that. I mean, there might be one. But I don't know it right off hand. For our homework, um, so let's see. Let's. Just, <laughs> no, no, no. You have to give. You have to. You know, work it out. I mean. Okay, so let's, let's work it out, right? So here's the definition, right? This is my definition. So that, does that suffice? Does that define phi on, on Z2? You know, this, yeah, I think so, right? Why is that? Um, well, I said Z2, I mean Z2 cross Z2. So, We have prescribed the value of every element in the domain. Okay. Um, is it single valued? Yes. <laughs> All right. Is it then, but then, I mean, a sentence might do, but you should say something, right? Like, um, is, is this mapping surjective? Yes. Yeah. Yes, because it, three, five, seven, three, five, seven, one's it, right? Is it injective? Yes, by construction, no two outputs, no two inputs go to the same output, right? I mean, if, essentially the definition itself is a one-to-one -one definition. <laughs> I, mean, I, I know, I know. The real question is, so I mean, to backtrack a little bit, you're not completely unjustified to just say this is clearly bijective. I mean, I guess what I would say would be something along the like each element from the domain is um, assigned uniquely to one element of the codomain. Right. Oh, you know, another way we could go here is 
this mapping is clearly surjective. That's obvious, right? And we're looking at a function from a four element set to another four element set. By the number 10 that we work from another chapter, it's automatically one to one. Because it's one to one if and only if it's on to, given that the cardinality of both the domain and codomain are finite. Yeah? Another way you could think of it. Um, the real issue though, right, is not just that it's bijection, it's that it's operation preserving. So you still have to check that. And there, how many possible products do you have? I mean, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to think of, is there, a, is there a slicker way to, I don't know what's the easiest way to check product. I mean, we can check them, right? Like, um, the of, um, I don't know, I, I don't know a fast way to get through this. Well, that's of course phi of zero, zero, right? So on the flip side, this is, um, fine parentheses. Um, I mean, some people omit the second pair of parentheses. I have mixed feelings about that. Um, I want to do it, but I feel guilty. Um, anyway, so zero, zero, so that's one, right? But on the other hand, phi of zero, one plus phi of zero, one is what? Not plus either, what should I try here? We're trying to judge if phi is a homo, uh, you know, an isomorphism from an additive group to a multiplicative group. So I shouldn't check the sum, I should take, check the product, right? So this is equal to three times three, right? Which of course is equal to one. I don't really see anything to do but write out 16 cases. So sorry. No, no, I have to show, the thing is I have to show that phi. Now there may be some slick notation that I'm just not thinking of at the moment, but I have to show this, right? If you'll allow me to omit a parenthesis or two. See this addition in the domain becomes multiplication in the range. That's the, that's the isomorphism here. But yeah, I don't see anything, I, there's 16 possible products. I mean, there's four times four. I mean, if you knew. It's commutative, so it's eight. The operation is commutative. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and maybe there's really, I guess once I get into it, the identity, maybe the identity one's almost a, a come over, like zero, zero plus. Yeah. Okay, the, the identity ones are for free, I think. Okay. Um, so really they're just, Less, yeah, but there, I mean, it's still, you know, yeah. So on the one hand, yes, you don't have to find a formula. On the other hand, this happens to you, case-wise analysis of the, you know. For this one, though, each the elements that I'm getting in order to know that takes out some of them. Because I guess the uh, the something with itself. Okay. Yeah. Now uh, th there are there. Are, let me see here if I can find another example that's less tedious. Um, you know, we have G equals to Zn, right, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 you know, n minus 1. And then we have the, um, let's say, oh, I don't want to call it, it's not Sn. I don't know what, I don't have a name for this thing yet. Let me just call it H. And I'm going to say H is equal to. Um, exponential of 2 pi i over n, right? 
which for what it's worth is cosine of 2 pi over n plus i times the sine of 2 pi over n. All right. Um, still not quite what I want. Um, missing a such that k is equal to 0, 1, 2, dot, 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 n minus 1. But you had a question before I get into this? I don't know. I was, I was asking before I... Go off into the wild blue, blue yonder here. Okay, so, you know, this here is a subset of the complex numbers, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to claim that um, this is a multiplicative group, right? This is, in fact, a multiplicative subgroup of complex numbers. It's a multiplicative subgroup of the non-zero complex numbers, in fact, to be more specific. All right. In fact, essentially by the De Moivre's theorem, sorry, <laughs> you can prove that um, the exponential of 2 pi i k over n, all right, that's equal to, in fact, the exponential of 2 pi i over n raised to the k power. That, that, that involves a number of interesting identities for sine and cosine. You can prove it by induction if you don't know this already. Um, uh, I mean, basically, e to, the, e to the i theta to the n is equal to e to the i n theta for all n in the natural numbers. This can be proved by induction. So I'm just using this with theta equal to 2 pi over n. And not n, I'm k. Sorry, operator overloading. There, better. Theta equals 2 pi over n. This is De Moivre's theorem. Now, <clears throat> so what does that show about H, this formula? It shows you H is what? It's formed by powers of this thing. Right? So what you have is it's the exponential, it's the cyclic generated by 2 pi i over n. You know, by the way, the exponential of 2 pi i over n raised to the n power is cosine of 2 pi um, plus i times the sine of 2 pi when you use the formulas I have up there, this, this formula. Um, when I get to k equals to n, I get 2 pi in cosine and sine, so the sine is zero, the cosine is one. In other words, the order of this element is n. So in fact, H is a cyclic group of order n with generator exponential 2 pi i over n. And, um, okay, on the other hand, this guy up here, right? is generated by one. <coughs> so here we don't need to write out n cases, right? A formula kind of suggests itself. If we send the generator to the generator, right? And the generator creates the whole group that probably should, we should probably be able to prove that's an isomorphism, right? So 
I would suggest that we say phi of k equals to what? So I'm, I'm going to define phi to go from, from g over to h in this case. Let me define it a different way. We just send one, the generator one, to the generator over here, and then we extend cyclically. So then phi of you know one plus one is what? This, this is still a definition, okay? <laughs> My point is, the natural definition is just to send generator to the generator and extend from there. So, you know, getting to the point, I would just say phi of k is equal to exponential of 2 pi i k over n. That would be the definition I gave. remains to prove it's one to one and on to. Actually, if we get one, we get the other. These are both n element sets, right? So which one do you want to prove? Do you want to prove it's one to one or do you want to prove it's on to? I want to prove it's one to one because one to one, I got the kernel. If I can show the kernel zero, we're done. So how can we calculate the kernel of this thing? So what we're looking at is k such that phi of k is equal to zero, right? So that's k such that the exponential of 2 pi i k over n, zero, listen to me, what's the identity in the codomain? It's one, right? See, H is a multiplicative group. It has a multiplicative identity of 1. G is an additive group. It has the ad additive identity of 0. So I want to study <coughs> this equal to 1, right? But what is that? I mean, just remember that this is what this means, right? Is the cosine of 2 pi k over n is equal to uh, plus i times the sine of 2 pi k over n equals to 1. How can you have this? That means two things, right? On the one hand, it means that the cosine of the real part has to match up. So 2, two pi... 2 pi k over n has to be equal to 1. And the sine of 2 pi k over n has to be equal to 0. When is sine 0? Integer multiples of pi, right? k ranges from 0 to n. So when can sine be 0? And when k is when k is n is is actually it, isn't it? Or maybe half n if if n is even, right? If if k is half n, if if k was n over two, if that was actually an integer, right? That would also give us pi, right? So depends on if n is even or not, right? But this this implies that either k is equal to n 
or k is equal to n over 2 if um, n even. Right? And how can we get cosine is 1? How do you get cosine 1? Cosine 1. Right? So either we either need, what is that? Either k equals to 0 or k equals to n, right? So the, the cosine is actually 1 at the edges the k equals 0 and k equals n. But we're looking for a simultaneous solution of both of these conditions, right? So we got to solve this and we got to solve that at the same time, right? So what does that force us to do? We can't put n over 2 even if it's even because n over 2 is not available in the cosine case. So the only thing that's common to both, it forces k to be n. Right? Thus, k is equal to n, and what's that tell us the kernel is? Okay, well, what's. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> I should say k equals to n, which is equal to 0, right? I'm an idiot. I was trying to work with 0 to n minus 1. I lost track of what I was doing. I should really put 0 here, right? n is 0. Um, so the kernel is just zero, thus phi is, is one to one, and um, the, you notice the cardinality of g is equal to the cardinality of h, which is n, so therefore phi is, is on to, right? So phi is a bijection, right? Actually, that's a little bit out of order, because I really can't use the one to one theorem until I know what. I need to know that phi is a homomorphism in order to use that theorem. That theorem presupposes that phi is a homomorphism. So I have no right to do that just yet, right? Now this one, this one's pretty. I mean, <coughs> excuse me. So if you look at phi of k plus l, right, then that's equal to the exponential um, of 2 pi i k plus l over n and um, I mean to be careful here the question is well I mean the point really is is that this argument up here works like modulo n right I mean there really is a little lemma I should prove to you which is that <laughs> Maybe a lemma e to yeah, e to the i, um, e to the i theta, is equal to e to the i theta plus you know two pi, um, two pi j, you know, for j and the integers. So, <clears throat> this is the exponential of two pi i k over n times the exponential of 2 pi i L over n. I feel like I'm glossing over something right now, guys. I'm sorry. And that is phi of k times phi of L. I could be pickier here about how do I know where L and k are, you know, landing and so forth. I am, I think, using the modular modularity of the addition there. I mean, if I'm going to be a stickler, as I should, and insist that k fall in this range, right, then, um, you know, this, this would not be what I put here, right? I mean, if, my point, 
hypothetical, right? If, if, um, if we're working with like Z10, right? And if I look at phi of say eight plus eight, here's the issue I'm, 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 I'm fussing about. We would not put 16 by the definition, right? We would put exponential of two pi i what? S times six, right? Over 10, you know? But that would be okay because if you multiplied the exponential of 2 pi i times 8 over 10 times the exponential of 2 pi i times 8 over 10, what would you get? You get the exponential of 2 pi i times 10 plus 6 over 10. And the thing is that gives you an exponential 2 pi i factor which just goes away and this simplifies to exponential of 2 pi i times 6 over 10. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm lacking the um, brain power to, to uh, exposit this in the proper way at the moment. This is a sketch of a solution. It's not quite right yet. Yeah. For this issue. So like I should say something along the lines of, um, you know, I should, I should force k plus l to be in the right range as to apply the definition, otherwise I'm cheating. Yeah. I thought I had to leave early today. It's not the case though because it turns out that the uh, skating place isn't open. So we have a few more minutes. Um, anyway, uh, quibbling aside, as you can see it's a homomorphism, right? There, there are stupider examples of this, right? Like. This is one I wanted to lead with actually. I wanted to compare like Z3, 0, 1, 2 versus Z3 tilde, um, minus 1, 0, 1. You know, I wanted to argue that Z3 is isomorphic to Z3 tilde, right? So what's the map? I mean, these are different point sets, right? But they're the same group. Both of these, I'm assuming that the addition is done mod three, yeah. So I, I would just do phi of x as what? Well. To get over here. Now you're thinking too hard. How do I get from one to the other? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. You can easily prove that that's one to one even with a formula, right? It's not hard if you, if you just think about choosing a different representative, right, for the, for the equivalence class in the modular arithmetic, any set of representatives is easily shown to be isomorphic to another set of representatives with respect to that, that modular arithmetic. And sometimes people exploit that isomorphism and they'll write stuff like, and I do this sometimes, I'll write that this is equal to Z3 again, you know? But as a point of order, I've tried to be somewhat dogmatic about saying Zn goes from 0 to n minus 1. Mm -hmm. I'm actually viewing Zn as a subset of the integers with a weird, multi with a weird addition, all right? But it is technically, for me, a subset of the integers. Now, if, if you really do believe in this equality, then you're not working with integers. You're working with cosets of integers. Right. Do you guys have any questions? 
see if we can work a problem in here that's explicit explicit problem. Or if, or if it's just a homomorphism. Yeah, the identity maps to the identity. Um, because we have this, you know, phi of E is phi of E times Z, right? But um, this is also equal to phi of E times the other E, all right? Suppose phi is going from G to G bar for the sake of discussion. But this, if you allow me this square of jibber jabber, um, and then by cancellation, we get E bar is equal to phi of E. So yeah, the identity has to map to the identity. Ah. Oh, I see your. Huh. So that must mean that, uh, Oh, so my mapping is wrong. I mean, that's what I was going to say. So I thought you were right. <laughs> hmm. Oh, that's why you wanted, you wanted to use the mod thing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I see. Um, yeah, I guess if we're just going to work with straight integers, we'll need to use like a ceiling or a floor or something like that. Um, oh, fine. You've driven me to it. Um, so... Zero, <laughs> if x is equal to zero, right? Um, one, if x is equal to one. And minus one, if x is equal to two. back to what you want ZN to be, you know? Yeah. Um, hmm. I mean, if I'm working with equivalence classes rather than integers, it gets easier, right? Like I could, well, that, those are just equal. That's the thing. Sorry. Um, is that right? I don't trust myself at this point. So the element one has order three. And the element two also has order three. And pl plus or minus one also have order three. Okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's better. Although I don't know a slick, I'm not sure if I can think of, can I think of a slick formula for that? I don't, what's it doing? It's fixing zero and one, and it's subtracting three from two. I don't know, if I could come up with a formula for it, it would just be an artificial thing anyway. It is. Um, let's see here. Well, 
if you guys don't have a question, I think I'll stop here since I'm kind of out of stuff to say. Well, I mean, I have stuff to say, but not quickly. <laughs> so. <coughs> Excuse me. Yay, yay. Oh, 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 one thing I should say. <laughs>